Dear colleagues, this is a case of IOL exchange. The patient is a young man. He underwent intraocular lens implantation several years back. We can see there is a rigid PMMA intraocular lens placed in the capsular bag. The haptics are in the capsular bag and there is a lot of fibrosis around the haptics. The pupil hasn't dilated well, so I am placing few iris hooks. This is the first iris hook at 1 o'clock. I am taking help of the Sinsky hook uh, to hook the pupillary margin. So the iris hook, the first iris hook at 1 o'clock has been placed. After that, another iris hook is placed at around 4.30 o'clock. Another one was placed at 7 o'clock. And one more hook was placed at around 9 o'clock. Now I found that I have to cut the haptic so I removed the iris hook at 7 o'clock and enlarged the incision and I am introducing a vana scissor to cut the haptic. With the help of a Sinsky hook I am, I am supporting the haptic and I have been able to cut this haptic. I tried to mobilize the haptic but I could not. Lot of fibrosis has occurred around the haptic. And if I pull vigorously, I will damage the capsular bag. And I will not be able to implant another intraocular lens. The other haptic is also cut. This patient had refractive error of minus 9 with 2.5 diopter cylinder so the spherical equivalent was around minus 10 so we have removed this PMMA lens and this is the lens which we have calculated with the help of a optical biometer and this is a I will of 10 diopter, intraocular lens of 10 diopter. When the intraocular lens was in place, when the PMMA lens was in place, we could not calculate the I will power with any other device. It was, it was giving erroneous readings with ultrasound biometry the intra uh, the IOL power came as 30 adapter and I didn't believe it because the fundus was myopic now the IOL a sensor multi-piece intraocular lens has been placed in the sulcus one haptic has gone into the sulcus the other haptic is dialed into the sulcus. There are some additions between the iris and the capsule, uh, inferiorly as well as superiorly. Those additions has been cut. Now, there's lot of viscoelastic substance in the anterior chamber. I have to remove that. So what I did is I used Simco cannula as well as cutter, vitrectomy cutter to remove the viscoelastic substance. First, I sutured the main incision which was used to remove the PMMA lens and to place the multipiece intraocular lens. 
Now I am using the vitrectomy cutter to remove the remaining cortical matter and I wanted to do a aridectomy in this case because sometimes a lot of reaction occurs sometimes the iris gets adhered to the intraocular lens. Now here is the peripheral aridectomy with the help of a cutter. Yes, that's it. So there was some oozing of blood which stopped after a few minutes. Now this stab incision which was there at 7 o'clock I am putting a suture because I had to enlarge this to introduce a Havana scissor through this to cut the haptic which was there at you know, 11 o'clock. Now the main incision is sutured with 10 O nylon. So hopefully this patient will do well. I have followed up this case for about one week and the patient is doing well. The vision has improved to 6 by 18 unaided and with optical correction it has come to 6 by 9. The optical correction, the uh, refractive error is within one diopter, uh, minus 0.75 diopter with minus 0.5 cylinder at around uh, 105 degree. That's it. The lens has been placed. The eye well has been nicely centered. The eye is nicely placed in the sulcus and we are almost through. Now this final wash I am using a Simco cannula for this final wash if any debris or any particular matter, anything is there in the antechamber, it should come out. I'm checking the intraocular pressure. I'm checking the intraocular pressure. It is fine. And case is over. Friends, I do not know if we can cut a PMMA lens into two parts and remove it through small incisions. Uh, probably it is possible, but I don't know. Uh, I didn't have any instrument like that to cut the PMMA lens.